celebrate the risen king. This morning, welcome to everyone here in the sanctuary, in the worship center. It is a beautiful thing. And welcome to those of you joining us online. We're so excited to celebrate Easter with you today. In the book of Revelations, 
uh, chapter 5, it says, Then I saw in the right hand of him who sat on the throne a scroll with writing on both sides and sealed with seven seals. And I saw a mighty angel proclaiming in a loud voice, Who is worthy to break the seals and open the scroll? But no one in heaven or on earth or under the earth could open the scroll or even look inside it. But then one of the elders said to me, Do not weep. See, the lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, has triumphed. He is able to open the scroll and the seven seals. And this morning we are celebrating that triumph of the Lion of Judah when he defeated death, when he rose from the grave, when he made a way to him when there was no way so that we could spend forever with him in eternity. That's something worth celebrating, amen? Yes, it is. Yeah. We're going to sing out to the Lion of Judah this morning. Son of 
give him praise. You may be seated. Well, it is a joy to be together on this Easter Sunday as we proclaim the victory of Christ. Jesus is risen. He has risen from the grave, and that means that all of death has been defeated for now and forever. So welcome on this Easter Sunday. I want to especially welcome those of you who might be new with us this morning. Welcome in the name of Christ. We just pray that you would feel that enthusiasm, that encouragement of God's spirit, God's spirit of hope this morning. Welcome to those of you who are participating online. We're so grateful that you're here, and we want to just help you to feel the welcome uh, that we have here in the worship center. My name is Debbie Thomas. I'm one of the pastors here at Redeemer, and it is a joy to be here with you this morning. I want to celebrate you being with us, and I want to invite you to take out your connection card. It should be right there in the uh, pew in front of you if you're here in the worship center. Or if you're online, I invite you to take out your phone or an iPad or uh, any other kind of device and just check in with us. Uh, let us know your name and your email and any other information that you'd like to give us there. And there's also a spot on here for you to write a prayer concern. We take prayer very seriously here at Redeemer. We want to pray with you. We want to walk with you through all of the different things of life. And so I just want to encourage you, if you do have a prayer concern this morning, to write that down. When you're filling out your connection card online, you can fill in a prayer request as well. And we will pray for you. We will surround you, and we will walk with you on that journey. If you're here in the worship center, these cards just go in the back, in the boxes labeled offering as you're done today. And so we just want to encourage you to participate and to fill that out and let us know that you're here. Well, Easter morning, as you know, began very early when the women went to the tomb and they didn't know the hope of resurrection yet. They were discouraged. They were disappointed. They thought all was lost. And so as they went to the tomb that, smor that morning, they had no idea what to expect. So let's sort of enter into the story as we continue to worship Luke chapter 24, verses 1 through 12. You'll see them on the screen. It says, But very early on Sunday morning, the women went to the tomb. Taking the spices they had prepared, they found that the stone had been rolled away from the entrance. So they went in, but they didn't find the body of Jesus. And as they stood there puzzled, two men suddenly appeared to them clothed in dazzling robes. And the women, well, the women were terrified and they bowed their faces to the ground. Then the men asked, why? Why are you looking among the dead for someone who is alive? He is not here. He is risen from the dead. Remember what he told you. Remember what he told you back in Galilee, that the Son of Man must be betrayed into the hands of sinful men, that he must be crucified, and that he would rise again on the third day. Then, then they remembered that he had said this. And so they rushed back from the tomb to tell his 11 disciples and everyone else what had happened. It was Mary Magdalene, Joanna, Mary, the mother of James, and several other women who told the apostles what had happened. But, but the story sounded like nonsense to the men, so they didn't believe it. However, Peter jumped up and he ran to the tomb to look, stooping. He peered in to see the empty linen wrappings. And then he went home again wondering what had happened, wondering what had happened. Would you stand as we celebrate a God who can turn anything around, who can turn graves into gardens? I'd search the world but it couldn't fill me Man's empty praise And treasures that fade Are never enough Then you came along And put me back together And every desire is now satisfied here in your love oh there's nothing better than you there's nothing better than you lord there's nothing nothing I'm not a 
God who turns things around. You are the God who turns, makes the impossible possible. You are the God who comes in unexpected ways. No one ever expected the, the Messiah to come as a baby. No one ever expected the Messiah to live just a, a normal, lowly life. And no one ever expected the Messiah to be nailed on a cross and to die. But you did those things so you could take our sin upon yourself and then you defeated death. You did the impossible. You rose again. That's why we're here, Lord. That is what our hope is. That is why you are seated at the right hand of God because you are the King of kings and the Lord of lords. And God, I pray that this morning um, it wouldn't be just another Easter, that it wouldn't be just another day, that we wouldn't just go through the motions, Lord, but that you would just make this so real to us because you are so real. You are so big. You are so good. 
Lord, we just worship you. just a couple of announcements as God has called us into ministry, and I want to invite you uh, to be a part of that as well. And the first is coming up this Saturday. We are super excited. We're going to be doing something called Sleep in Heavenly Peace. We're going to be building beds right out in our uh, parking lot here at Redeemer. We're going to build 40 beds for kids right here in the Lansing area that don't have a bed. They might be sleeping on the floor. They might be sleeping on the sleeping bag. Who knows? 
but there are kids right now waiting for those beds. In fact, we found out this week that their warehouse, Sleep in Heavenly Peace's warehouse, doesn't have any beds in it. And so these beds that we're going to build on Saturday are going to go right into use about a week later. We're going to get a chance to deliver them. And can you imagine the smile on a kid's face when they get to have their very first bed and they get a new comforter and a new pillow? It is absolutely outstanding. So it's going to be this coming Saturday from 9 to 1, April 23rd. You do have to register to participate, so you need to go right on our website under our events section, and you need to click on and sign up uh, so that you can be there on Saturday. It's going to be a fantastic day. You don't want to miss it. Then I also want to highlight uh, that Vacation Bible School is coming up. We're so excited. We are going to have it back this week. Uh, it's going to be on uh, June, June the 20th to the 23rd. And registration is currently open. You'll see in your uh, handout, there's a QR code that you can do that. So make sure you register your kids three years old through fifth grade. If you are a teenager, you can help out. So please participate and volunteer. We need tons of volunteers. We need donations. Uh, so make sure you're participating in that. We're super excited about VBS coming up in June. And then two weeks from today is our big celebration Sunday. We're talking about this idea of count me in. That's what next week and the following week are going to be about. That God is counting on you and me to be a part of his ministry. And so we're going to celebrate that day. We're going to be able to uh, bring our commitment cards and just celebrate what God's done in ministry over this past year. And we're going to have a brunch. And so I want you to RSVP for the brunch. There's a little card in your handout right now. Or you can uh, RSVP online as well. But I want you to come. And I want you to participate, and I want you to um, enjoy that time. So if you'd like to come, take a moment and fill that out, and you can put that in the back of those boxes as well. And then lastly this morning, every year for Easter, we take a special offering. And this is an offering outside of Redeemer because we care about people, because people matter to us. And so the uh, particular ministry that we've chosen this year is the City Rescue Mission right here in Lansing. They've been in ministry for over 130 years, and they are open 365 days a year so that no matter what, if somebody has, gets to a point where they need food or they need a place to stay for the night, Lansing City Rescue Mission is always open. And they come in and they provide food and lodging and the hope of Jesus to everyone who comes. And so if you'd like to make a special contribution to that today, I just want to encourage you to do so. There's an Easter offering envelope, or if you go on our mobile give uh, site, you can just put it right in Easter offering. But I just want to encourage you to participate with us as we get a chance to give outside of ourselves. And if you'd like to give a ministry, uh, a gift to the Ministry of Redeemer, we encourage you to do that as well in the boxes in the back, or as uh, you can do so online. But we encourage you. We want you to participate. We want you to be a part of what God is doing. Glory be to God. As we sing this next song, um, I just want you to take this as an opportunity to sit and just reflect on um, what Jesus did for you. To sit and reflect on the gift of the Son and to just sit in gratitude of what he did for you. chains, freed my soul, for the first time I had hope. Thank you, Jesus, for the blood applied. Thank you, Jesus, it has washed me white. Thank you, Jesus, you have saved Brought me from the darkness into the world. 
Look around. It doesn't take long to recognize the brokenness surrounding us. Division, hatred, fear, uncertainty. The pain we're witnessing is real. And the need for a savior is undeniable. It's this need which broke the heart of God and moved him to do the unimaginable. For God so loved the world, he sent his only son to change our eternity, to be the perfect sacrifice for us. Love on a cross, dying once for all, laid to rest in the darkness of a tomb. Today, as we face so many unknowns, may we remember the simple truth of Easter. The stone's been rolled away. The grave is empty. Jesus is alive. And love has risen. If you really had to, how long could you live without water? Maybe research tells us we could live about three days if we really had to, 72 hours. If you had to, how long could you live without air? If we take a deep breath, how long can we do it? Well, if we were really trained in that and you know, really worked on that, maybe we could live up to eight minutes without air. How long can we live without these little devices? Mm, now we're really talking. Research tells us 20 minutes is the average that we can leave these things alone, believe it or not. How long can we go without Easter candy? 364 days, 23 hours, and 8 minutes, right? Who's going to have some candy today? But how long can you and I live without hope? Not one minute. Not one minute. You see, all of us, we need hope. We need hope to live. We need hope to cope. It's the element that keeps our souls alive. And hope, well, hope is more than just wishing that something's going to happen in the future. It's more than just a pie-in-the-sky idea. We need hope more than just when we get into trouble or just when we feel like we're struggling or drowning. You and I need hope. And we need hope every single minute. Because hope, hope is what gives meaning and purpose to our lives. Hope is something that all, every single one of us need today so that we can face tomorrow with passion and with energy and with purpose. Now some of you, as I look out here today, as I know that some of you are participating online, some of you, when you walk in here today, are facing a huge challenge in your life. You're facing some sort of a struggle. You're facing something that might feel like a dead end, like you're just kind of stuck right now. Because all of us, we go through disappointments in life. That's part of life we go through, disappointments, times when things haven't worked out the way that we thought they would. And we think, if this doesn't change, I'm not sure how I'm going to get through it. I'm not sure how I'm going to keep going. And where do we look for hope? Sometimes we put our hope in the next thing, don't we? Well, if I just, if I just get this promotion, then it's going to be better. If I just get a chance to change my work schedule a little bit, if this relationship gets better, then everything is going to get better. If this happens or that happens, and we start to put our hope in those situations or those things or those people. And there's not... There's nothing wrong with that. Sometimes that's going to change for the better, but sometimes those things have the opportunity to disappoint us because that person doesn't do what we thought was going to happen or that job situation doesn't change and they have the potential to disappoint us. And so we have to center our hope on something that doesn't change and that is the hope and love of Christ. 
You see, that's what we celebrate today. The hope of the resurrection of Jesus Christ, the central event in, a central event in all of human history that will never disappoint us. And it is a thing on which our hope rests. So we're going to talk about hope for a few minutes this morning. And the definition of hope that I want to use for today's message is this. You're going to see it on the screen. Hope is trust and confidence that Jesus will see me through every situation I face. The trust and confidence that Jesus is going to see me through every situation I face. Every situation I face. And we're going to take a look at the Easter story this morning and see that resurrection hope well, it always finds a way through. It might be a different way, but it always finds a way. So let's pray as we get started this morning. Lord Jesus, as we come here this morning, I pray that in these few moments that we would just open our ears to listen and to hear from you. Lord, that your spirit would speak to us as only you can do. And that each one of us here this morning might find a nugget, something that was designed especially for us from your heart this morning. And so, Lord, I pray. I pray that you might reveal that to us and that we might hear from you. In the name of Christ, we pray. Amen. So we're going to pick up from where I just read in the scripture. We're going to pick up in Luke chapter 24, starting in verse 13. And again, the women had come back and they had told the story that they couldn't find Jesus, that the tomb was empty, and they're trying to figure out now what this means. What does that mean? How are we going to understand this? And so that's the context of where we are. And we're invited to enter as the story continues, where two men are walking from Jerusalem, where they had just heard this news, and they're walking to a small village about seven miles away, approximately one day's walk. So we're going to pick up the story in verse 13. You'll see it on the screen there. It says, now that same day, so that was Easter Sunday morning, two of them were going to a village called Emmaus. And they were talking with each other about everything that had happened. And as they talked and discussed these things with each other, Jesus himself came up and walked along with them. But they were kept from recognizing him. And he asked them, what are you discussing together as you walk along? Now we're going to pause there for just a moment. These two men are in deep conversation trying to understand what had happened. Jesus has died. They didn't know what that meant or what was going to happen next. And so these two men are walking along. They're they're traumatized. They're perplexed. They're confused. They're trying to understand and figure out why. Why did this happen? Why did Jesus die? And remember, they're sad. This was their best friend. This was their leader. This was the one that they had spent time with, that people had listened to, that he had taught, and now he's gone. And they were incredibly sad. What did it mean and what were they going to do? And so as they're going along their way, this stranger comes up and asks them that same question. Why? Why are you sad? Why are you downcast? Why are you feeling this way? And I can just see Cleopas turning to him and saying, seriously? Like, did you miss the whole weekend news? Do you happen to not, you know, pick up your phone and read the USA Today? Come on, how do you not know this story? He says, are you the only one in Jerusalem who doesn't know this big story that has happened? And so they go on to tell the story, verse 19. Jesus of Nazareth was a prophet, powerful in word and in deed before God and all the people. And the chief priests and our rulers handed him over to be sentenced to death. And they crucified him. But we had hoped that he was the one who was going to redeem Israel. We had hoped. We had hoped that he was going to be the leader that we needed. We had hoped that he was going to make a better way for us. We had hoped that he was going to lead us into the future. We had hoped. Do you hear that? In the past tense. Their hope, their hope was gone. And they're trying to think about these these events that had happened in Jerusalem, and it was painful to talk about it. Their hope, it it was gone. They were incredibly disappointed. Have you been there at times in your life too? When the disappointment of life has come? When it didn't work out the way you thought it was going to? 
when you had no idea that this was going to come onto your plate? What do we do when our hopes are dashed, when we're frustrated, when we're disappointed by events or people in our life? What do you do when you go through times that are confusing, when you don't understand why, when you ask that question and you just want to cry out to God, why? I don't understand. I don't get it, God. That's where they were, too. You see, Easter hope is not just for those times when the test results come back negative or the relationship is saved or the money comes through. Oh, we want to rejoice in those times and sing hallelujah, glory be to Jesus. But Easter hope, that trust and confidence that Jesus will see me through every situation I face, that kind of Easter hope is also for the times when it doesn't work out when the worst thing happens, when the divorce becomes final, when the relationship breaks apart, when the test results come back positive. That's what they were feeling that day. Jesus died. It was over. It was done. Their worst fears were realized. They had hope, and it left. But guess what happens? There's a new story that begins to emerge. There's a new hope that begins to happen. And resurrection hope, well, it always finds a way. It always finds a way. What they had seen and experienced was not the end of their hope. It was just the beginning of a new one. It was just the beginning of something new. And as we continue in our story, we see that Jesus, well, he listened first. He listened to the men tell their story, but then he began to teach and instruct them. Look at verse 27. It says, And beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he explained to them what was said in all the scriptures concerning himself. And so Jesus began to teach them and instruct them and help them put the pieces together so they could understand what was happening. You see, he said these things, well, they have a greater purpose. They have a greater meaning. And these things happen so that God could be restored in right relationship with all of humanity. Guys, this is bigger than just what you see in this moment. There's a bigger story. There's something bigger that's happening. And he began to help them understand those pieces and gave them hope that there was something that God was doing that they just hadn't seen yet. And when you and I go through those times also that seem confusing and don't make any sense, it's because God might be right there saying, I'm weaving together another story. I'm putting these pieces together. You might not understand it yet, but I'm putting it together in a meaningful way. Jesus walked with these two men, and it, evening was coming, and it looked like Jesus was going to continue on his journey. And they said, come on, stay with us. It's late. You can stay here. We'll have a spot for you. And I'm so glad that they did, because they were rewarded with the presence of Jesus. They didn't understand it in that moment. But they were rewarded because Jesus, well, what did he do? He came into their house and he sits down for a meal. And it was in the context of a meal that they begin to understand that this, this is Jesus. Jesus is back. And if you've been with us in all of these services leading up to Easter, we've been in this series called Breaking Bread with Jesus. And we've been looking at the seven different meals that Jesus sits and he eats a meal with people. And he listens to their story, and he talks with them, and he wants to hear about everything that's going on. And he begins to teach them around a meal, and he does it here too. Look at verse 30. It says, when he was at the table with them, he took bread, he gave thanks, and he broke it. And he began to give it to them. And then their eyes are open, and they recognize him, and he disappeared from their sight. And they asked each other, were not our hearts burning within us while he talked with us on the road and opened the scriptures to us? They remembered. They remember the time that Jesus took bread and he broke it and he fed the multitude of 5,000 people. And he took the bread on the last supper with the disciples and he broke it and he gave it to the disciples. And here again, he took bread and he broke it and he gave it. And their eyes were open. This is Jesus. He is here. He is back. They had not lost him. They thought they were never going to see him again. But it wasn't the end. It was just a change. It was different. 
it was still good, maybe even better before. Jesus was still there empowering them, strengthening them, and encouraging them in their daily living. But it was a change. A change from what they had known before. And I want to talk about that little word change for just a minute this morning. The word change brings all kinds of different emotions with it. Some of you out there, you're a person who loves change. Are you out there? Do you love change? Let us know. Do you love change? Some of you, you love, you, you, you change the furniture in your house because you just like to change it. And you change your, your work schedule if you can. Or you love to change your hairstyle or whatever it is. You just like change. There's people out there that like change. For other people, change is a bad word. You don't ever want your furniture to change. It's the same way it's always been. You don't want anything to change. You don't want your work schedule to change. Your hairstyle's been the same way forever. You just don't like change. Because it sort of produces this anxiety. What's going to happen next? And I'm not really sure. But here's the reality. No matter which way you view change, if you love it or you really can't stand it, life is all about change. It is. Nothing stays the same in life. New life is needed for every organism or it will eventually die. Jesus said, unless a kernel of wheat falls to the ground, it cannot become something new. And sometimes it is true. We are going to face our worst fears in life and sometimes they may even come to pass. But it is never, ever the end. A new Hope can emerge on the other side of that. A new hope can begin, something that might be even greater than what we expect. The men uh, experience Jesus in a new way, even better than they could have imagined. And their despair becomes delight in the hope of Jesus' resurrection as it begins to sink in what's happening. You see, resurrection hope, well, it always finds a way. It might be a new way. There might be something new emerging, but it always, it always finds away. And maybe you're here today and God is tapping on your shoulder and asking you to step out and to do something new in life. We get to those points in life too where we just sense that there's a change that needs to be happened. I need to pursue this new job opportunity. I need to be able to pursue this relationship. I need to be able to do you fill in the blank. Sometimes it is God who taps on our shoulder and invites us to do something that we've never done before, to try something new. An Easter hope is that trust and confidence that Jesus is going to see me through every situation that I face. He has come so that we might have life and life to the fullest. It is the greatest joy that transcends any fear of the future. 1 Peter 1.21 says, Because God raised Christ from the dead and gave him great glory, your faith and hope can be placed confidently in God. And I would add, no matter what. At the university, there was a professor, and he was just known by one name, Herman. And there was one night that Herman came, and he attended a concert, and there was a, a beautiful, accomplished pianist who was playing a piece and that pianist suddenly got ill and had to retire right in the middle of the piece. And so the people in the concert didn't really know what to do. And in that moment, the gentleman named Herman, who was sitting in the audience, just quietly walked up to the piano and just began playing this beautiful, complicated piece that nobody had heard before. And it was delightful, and the concert went on. And later that evening, there was a student that came up to the professor and said, how, how were you able to do this most complicated piece without any rehearsal? And he said, oh, my friend, there have been plenty of rehearsals. He said, back in 1939, when I was a budding young concert pianist, I was arrested and placed in a concentration camp. And putting it mildly, the future looked bleak, and my hope was gone. But I knew that in order to keep just a flicker of hope alive that I might someday play again, I needed to practice every day. And so I began by fingering a piece from my repertoire on my bedboard late one night. And the next night I added a second piece and pretty soon I was running through several of them every single day. And I did that every night for five years. It so happened that the piece I played tonight at the concert hall, well, that was part of that repertoire. 
And that constant practice kept my hope alive. And every day I renewed my hope that one day, one day I would be able to play my music again on a real piano and I would be able to do it in freedom. You see, hope, hope is what keeps us alive. Hope is what keeps us looking toward tomorrow. And the the message of Easter is that there is always hope. No matter how tragic life seems, there is always hope. And the message of resurrection is that God triumphs over all the forces of darkness and the story ends well. Resurrection hope always finds a way. It might be a new way, but it always finds a way. So what's your story? Where do you need hope this morning? Where do you feel stuck? Where do you feel like you're running into a dead end? At the beginning of this message, I told you that you cannot live without water. We could up to three days if we really had to. Or we really can't live without air. We could maybe for eight minutes if we were really trained, but we cannot live for a moment without hope. Jesus is our living hope. Jesus is the hope of the world, and that is the message of Easter. And I just want to invite you this morning just to be able to open your eyes and to envision, to envision a new future for something that might feel broken, for a disappointment, for something that's difficult in your life right now. Hope is what Jesus gives. A purpose for living, a home in heaven forever, to start living the life you and I were created to live. And God created you and I for a purpose. And when we delight in him, when we sit down at the table with him, that purpose is brought to the surface. You and I need Jesus in our life because Jesus is the author of hope. And whatever your situation, whatever you're facing today, resurrection hope always finds a way. It is never too late for God to do something new in your life and to envision a new future. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, when we come to those moments in our life when we're incredibly disappointed, when things don't work out nearly the way that we thought, when we're frustrated, when we're asking that question, why? Because we don't understand. Lord, help us to remember that you were there walking right with us just as the disciples, just as you were with them a long time ago. And we might not recognize it in that moment, but Lord, I pray that you would open our eyes, that we might see and recognize your presence with us in the difficult moments And that our eyes might be open to see those glimpses of hope, just like when you broke the bread with them so long ago. And Lord, for those here who are are participating online or are here in the worship center, who just need that that vision, Lord, of, of hope, of something new that feels really hard right now, I just pray, Lord, that you would open their eyes so that we might get that glimpse of hope and that we might have that trust and confidence that you will be with us no matter what it is that we face. For Jesus, you are our living hope. In the name of Christ, amen. Amen. Would you stand with me as we just thank God for the hope that we have in Jesus? Yeah.
glory to God. Go now with the blessing of God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, that we might live out that hope in this moment and every day this week and in the months to come, that we might be his people of hope. In the name of Christ we pray, amen. Go with God's blessing. Happy Easter, and we'll see you back next week.